Hi, everybody. My name is Ian Lamont. I am the author of Lean Media and the founder of i30 Media Corp. And today I'm going to be talking about Amazon detail page optimization. A detail page is, by the way, those are just product pages on Amazon. Amazon uses the term detail page. So I'll be using it in this presentation. Uh, I've been using Amazon for many years to sell things, including books and including other types of uh, products. And I've used many different uh, programs to market them and to protect the brand, etc. So I have a lot of experience to share. Uh, one thing, though, I don't work for Amazon. It's up to you to make choices about your own business. And just as it's possible to make lots of money, it's also possible to lose lots of money, either because you do something wrong, Amazon changes the way these programs operate, or, you know, worst case scenario, Amazon shuts you down because you violated their terms of service. So it's, uh, you have to evaluate risk and uh, follow Amazon's terms uh, to, uh, as you attempt to navigate this. So let's get started here. Amazon detail page optimization, um, it's important because if you, if you can optimize your detail page, uh, so more people are getting, you know, it's meeting expectations and also uh, it's convincing people that, that your book is worth uh, buying. You're more like you're likely to get more sales, more revenue, and also very importantly, more organic search ranking. I'm not going to get into the search ranking so much today because I've already covered that in other videos. Uh, but all these three things are good for your publishing business. Um, the important rates that I might bring up in this presentation, one of them is called uh, CTR or click through rate. That means when someone sees your listing in the search results of Amazon or maybe an advertisement and then they decide to click on it, uh, that is the click-through rate. So let's say that your, um, your advertisement or your, your uh, listing shows up 100 times in, in Amazon search results and people, when one person clicks on it every 100 times, you'd have a click-through rate of 1%, which is actually pretty good for, for click-through rates because there's so many products available on Amazon. Conversion rate, um, this is, that means when people hit your detail page, and there's, let's say, 100 people visit it, and 10 of them decide to buy, buy your book, that's a conversion rate of 10%. And by the way, that's an excellent conversion rate. For many types of books, actually, conversion rates are in the low single digits. So if you can get it above 5 or 6%, that's, that's really good. And if you can get it above 10%, that's fantastic. Okay, how to measure conversion rates. Uh, actually, this data is kind of hard to get. There's a couple ways to do it. I've listed, listed some programs where I've, that I've used in, uh, to, to get this data. Uh, but actually, the best one to do it, I think that's available to most publishers, including ones who are using Amazon KDP, Kindle Direct Publishing, is Amazon Advertising. Uh, and that, and the, unfortunately, Amazon doesn't easily give it to you. Uh, you have to do a little calculation in, in Excel or Google Sheets. Uh, but it is possible to get that information. And basically, all you're doing is just determining how many people visited the uh, detail page and then what percentage of them turned into an order. Uh, the other place to get this that some of you may have access to is Amazon Seller Central. That information is made available there, and we'll actually see an example of that later on. Okay, so what goes into a detail page that converts well for a book? And this is one of the books that my company publishes, Crowdfunding Basics in 30 Minutes by Michael J. Epstein. And here is the basic listing. You know, it has the book, three different versions, the ratings, title, uh, information about buying it, etc. And I want to call out a few things. So first of all, it has an image, and the image is professional. So People on Amazon do judge books by their cover, and you want a professional-looking image. That's number one, and this book meets that expectation. The title is a little bit long. Uh, that Part of that relates to the fact that I want to make sure that people are able to find it, because there's a lot of choices for books about crowdfunding. Um, but also, I just want to basically let people know what the book is about, too. So Crowdfunding Basics in 30 Minutes, How to Use Kickstarter, Indiegogo, and other crowdfunding platforms to support your entrepreneurial and creative dreams. I think that kind of sums up what the book is about. Um, price. So price is not just the price that it costs, which is $11.99. So that's, you know, maybe within people's expectations, but it's also available as Amazon Prime. People do want to see Amazon Prime. If you're participating in Amazon KDP paperback and or uh, Amazon Advantage, those particular programs, you should get Prime. Although what we found out in the past uh, year or so is sometimes Amazon will turn off uh, book delivery and make them not available within two or three days. Uh, so just be aware of that. Reviews are so critical. Uh, this one has 19 ratings and reviews, four and a half stars. It's a little on the low side in terms of the number of reviews, but actually the fact that it's four and a half stars is, is pretty good. Uh, one, one thing I tell people is you don't want all five star reviews, especially if there's a lot of them, because it looks like there's some trick going on. Your, the reviews should be honest reviews from real, real readers. I mean, th that's a pretty important thing to get, and there are ways to do that. And then finally, uh, there's a description of the book. The, the description has some bolded words as well as some larger words, and you can customize that. And also author info. So uh, the author, Michael, he's created an author page, and if you click on that, it'll show the other stuff that he's working on.
The detail page meets expectations. It's a professional looking publishing page, even though I'm just an independent publisher. So for descriptions, I think a lot of authors and publishers get hung up on this. You know, we're writers, we wanna make sure our prose looks good. Uh, but I think there's a few rules of thumb to follow here with descriptions, 10 second rule. That is people should be able to figure out what's going on with your book within 10 seconds. Um, give a summary by all means, but don't give away the whole plot. That's a bad idea. Highlight awards of the, or the qualifications of the author, if there, if there are any, and that could be for a fiction author. For instance, if you've released 20 fiction books in the past uh, 50 years, so you have a, a long career doing this, that's great. Um, or if you're nonfiction, maybe you're an expert in the field. You have a PhD in, uh, in whatever, and uh, you can cite that or you've won some sort of award. Why your product is better or unique. And don't compare your book directly to other people's books. First of all, you can't do that. It's against Amazon Terms of Service. What you're trying to do actually just is just saying why your book stands out or why your book is unique. So for instance, my book, Excel Basics in 30 Minutes, one thing that makes it unique, it also talks about uh, Google Sheets. So no other Excel book, as far as I know, talks about that. So I, I think that's worth, that's worth highlighting, and I do, in the subtitle. Uh, HTML formatting, this lets you make some words bigger or smaller or bold them or italicize them. To learn more about that, just Google a uh, quick HTML tutorial and you'll find out information on how to set it up. Uh, Amazon doesn't allow you to do much HTML formatting, but basic stuff is okay. And then bullets and emojis. So I, bullets are a great way to break up any sort of presentation. I'm using it right now. You can use that on your description as well. Emojis, Amazon's been cutting down on those recently. And in, in fact, those, those may be phased out at some point because they're so easy to abuse. But um, if you're able to, it's great. You can put them in there. Don't, um, one thing I see a lot of the new authors and even some publishers do, they don't have a properly formatted uh, description. It's all one giant block of text. So after you publish it, just go back and make sure it shows up the way that you want it to. If it's not broken up, you need to figure out how to add paragraph breaks into your description. Don't give away the plot. I said that before. Um, and, and this last one, ask authors to write descriptions. You know, for self-published authors, you, you may not have any choice. You're the only person who can do it. You don't have money to hire a marketer. But if you are a, a serious publisher, you know, make sure that your marketing department or the marketing person you work with helps help works with you on making a good description. Sometimes you, as the author, the publisher, you need to step away from it and let someone with a little bit of an outside view write the description. So it's more compelling for uh, prospective readers who are browsing it on Amazon. Okay, here's another thing. Don't don't do this. Uh, this is a this is not a real book. The Spectral Key, cozy mystery gift for mom, free Kindle book. I've actually seen um, descriptions like this. These aren't descriptions. It's a title of a book, but some of this some of these details should be in the description. Um, I don't think you should call your book a cozy mystery in the subtitle of the book. That's something that belongs in the in the in the description. And what people are doing here is they're adding these extra keywords to the title or the subtitle in order to give it better ranking in Amazon. And the depressing thing is it works. Uh, the, what you should know though, is that you're violating Amazon's terms of service and there's a chance that the book either may get pulled or you may be told to do something like change the, change the title and the subtitle of the book. So by the way, if Amazon tells you change the title of the book, that's a big deal. You have to go back to your designer and do a whole new cover. Maybe you have to change the in, inside part of the book as well. So that's not good. Follow Am Amazon's terms and you won't get burnt like that. Um, Amazon's terms very specifically say uh, they don't want keywords that mislead or manipulate customers. You can't mention other authors in your uh, title or, or subtitle. You can't use free. You can't use Kindle. Um, amazingly, I still see people um, using Kindle in their title and subtitle. So something's not really going on with their automated systems to flag stuff like that. So uh, just be aware of that. Um, another thing you shouldn't do, uh, although I did this myself a long time ago because I had no other choice, but DIY covers. Let, like, let's say that you know, you know how to use Photoshop or GIMP or something like that. That's great, but you know, d d don't. First of all, it takes a long time to make a cover, and second, secondly, there's people out there who are much more qualified to make good-looking covers. Uh, this cover, which I released in 2012, even though it worked, uh, it didn't work that well. And in fact, what I did when it started selling is I hired a professional designer to help me design some new design comps. We chose the one in the lower left corner and that resulted in a 50% increase uh, in daily sales, okay? And that costs like a couple hundred dollars to, to get that cover all sorted out by, and it would have, I should have actually done it earlier than I did, but I did the DIY route first, so, so don't do that. Um, here's another interesting thing. So this is not a book. This is a different type of product I sell on Amazon. It's actually the same product, yet there are two different conversion rates. So uh, the red one has a conversion rate of 15%. The blue one has a conversion rate of 6%. 
and it's essentially the same product. And uh, you may be wondering, well, how can that be? How can the same product be have two totally different conversion rates on Amazon? And let's take a look and see what happened. And by the way, this this uh, data comes from Amazon Seller Central. It's in the business reports section of Amazon Seller Central. Okay, so here are the two products. And can you guess which one has the 15% conversion rate versus which one has the 6% conversion rate? Yeah. So the one on the right is the one with the 15% conversion rate. One on the left is 6%. And you can start to compare the items that make, make it so. So one is that, uh, the first one is that the reviews for the, um, well, the one on the left, there's only six of them and it's four star compared to 18 uh, and five star on the right. Uh, the picture on the left, it's a very simple pic product picture. There's no special packaging or anything. The one on the right actually has four different pictures, including the product picture, but as well as the packaging. Uh, the price on the left is is lower. It's only um, $9.99 compared to $18.99, but the $18.99 one has a Prime, an Amazon Prime check mark. And some people, they will only order if it's Prime because they'll get it much sooner. And uh, pointing out those things. Okay, so reviews. This is, you know, obviously it's it's really important to get good reviews. If your book doesn't have any reviews at all, a lot of people, they, they want validation from other other readers to understand what they're getting into. It really does help sales. Uh, the one the the stuff that sells the best on Amazon are the ones that has the most reviews and the most good reviews, and also it, imp it impacts advertising costs, Amazon advertising or any other type of advertising for that matter. Because if you're sending people to let's say the uh, the, the products I just showed you, and uh, there's only six six reviews and it's four star versus uh, the 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 same product that's um, five stars and there's 18 reviews you know the, the one on the the one on the right will perform better that and so I'm spending less money on converting converting people to sales so so it's you have to understand that relationship uh, and then the other thing you know a couple other reasons why reviews are important um, usually I like to look at reviews because they let me know if there's something wrong uh, it could be with the packaging it could be perhaps a, a mistake that Amazon made in shipping it uh, there could be some other sort of issue that I need to be aware of maybe either to notify Amazon that there's a problem with shipping or that they should maybe remove that review because Amazon was late uh, delivering the book or there's something I need to fix. And I'm gonna, I have a funny example in a little bit. Okay, how to get leg legitimate reviews. This has really changed a lot in the last five years, actually. Um, five years ago, I was using Good, uh, Goodreads giveaways. I don't do that anymore. Um, but there's some new programs that have come up that are really spectacular. They include putting a uh, some message in your front matter or back matter to let people know that uh, leave, leaving an honest review would be appreciated. ARC programs, that means advanced review copy or advanced reader copy. Um, basically, it's a program that helps put your book into the hands of readers or, or you organize it yourself. Um, you're allowed to give people a free copy of the book in return for an honest review. There has to be some disclosure on Amazon when you do that. There's a program called NetGalley, which is actually a fantastic way to get reviews. Basically, NetGalley has all of these librarians and reviewers and people who love books. They want to get a chance at reading a, uh, an early copy of the book, either ebook or a PDF. And in return, they'll write a review. The review may be good, it may be bad, uh, but if you're making a quality book, uh, hopefully they'll be good. Uh, but also what some of these folks do once they publish the review on NetGalley, and you can use the review in, in, like in the, uh, the back cover of your book or on your website or whatever, some of them actually publish it on Amazon, which is really, really helpful. Um, Kirkus Indie, Ford Reviews, these are professional grade reviews. You pay for uh, these Kirkus or Forward to write up the review and spend the time doing it, a professional quality review, but there's no guarantee it will be uh, good or bad or whatever. And in fact, I've used these programs before and uh, once I got a bad review, which I was disappointed in, uh, but that's, you know, that's the roll of the dice. Our early reviewer program, this is something through uh, Amazon Seller Central, you pay $60 and they'll review the, uh, up for up to five reviews. I've tried it with some types of published uh, books, not, not quite books. They're a different type of book product. They have an ISBN. It's actually worked for that, which is great. Uh, Goodreads giveaway, I've mentioned that before. Goodreads is the online community for, um, book, for, for book readers and uh, sometimes reviews that show up on Goodreads. You basically, you, get, you offer the book uh, and some, sometimes people will write reviews um, they also show up on Amazon because it's owned by the same company. And then a product review insert. And let's take a, an example of that. Um, this, these are for non-book products. Uh, the one on the left is actually one that I use myself to try to get people to review books. 
The one on the right is an interesting one for another product we, we bought. I don't even remember what it was. Uh, but basically, they wanted people to contact them by phone or email if there was a problem with the product. And what they were trying to do was to avoid people leaving uh, negative reviews on Amazon. I thought that was a pretty interesting thing. You can do that with your books. Uh, and in fact, I do this with my books, not as an insert, but just in the, uh, at the end, of the, at the end of, the, of the book, there's a message from the author. And the message also says, if you're happy with the knowledge you've gained from PowerPoint Basics in 30 minutes, please let other people know about it, either by leaving an honest review uh, or recommending this guide to your personal and professional networks. So that's a, that was in a book that we published a couple of years back. Here's a review you never want to see. Uh, for some reason, the paperback version is actually printed backwards. And, you know, if you see something like this on, your, on an Amazon review for one of the books that you've published, what's the first thing you should do? And, and, and you know, I ask this question when I give presentations, and some, of the, some people get it right away. The first thing you should do is actually check to see if it's true. Uh, it may be somebody who's winding you up. I think this book actually looks like it's, um, it looks like it could be it could be a legitimate review. So just order a copy yourself, take a look at it, and by gosh, if it's printed backwards, contact your pub, your printer or uh, contact your book designer or contact uh, CreateSpace or Amazon or IngramSpark or whoever and see what the heck is going on here because that's a pretty serious problem. And if lots of people are getting a book that's printed backwards, your reviews are just going to totally tank. And it's up to you to fix the problem uh, or perhaps your one of your publishing partners. Uh, the one of the review above it is also pretty interesting. Uh, th this person says they never received it, uh, but they still gave it three stars. And I thought that was I thought that was a, a pretty interesting outcome for that. Uh, in any case, if you have any more questions about Amazon publishing or Amazon programs, the ones that I've talked about today, go to leanmedia.org. That's my website, and click on video. I have lots more videos there, as well as the blog, which I have blog posts talking about many of these issues. My name is Ian Lamont. Thank you so much for watching.